Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. We are just getting back from race week, still recovering and unpacking. Uh, haven't cleaned up a whole lot, haven't done a whole lot of work, but we had a fantastic time. Now, in my last few videos, I talked about race week and then putting the cam and heads on this thing, and a lot of people asked about the combo. So without you having to watch you know, an hour's worth of videos to figure out what the combo is, I'm gonna go over the combo right now for you. Now, before I changed anything, this was a stock 350 trade engine from GM. It had a 260 horsepower rating. Now it's got the 929 cam in it, which is supposed to be like the 300 horsepower hydraulic flat tappet cam. Um, it had an Edelbrock dual plane performer RPM air gap. Uh, it had a 342 gear, still does, 342 gear with a posi and a 10 bolt eight and a half, turbo 350 transmission, and I had a B&M Torque Master 2400 in there. Now that converter wasn't stalling anywhere close to 2400, more like 14 or 1500 at best. Now I wanted to change that and I wanted to put a cam and heads on it. I already had a set of aluminum heads. They are the Summit Racing 200cc heads and they are basically the Brodix Iron Killer heads, the IK200s. Now they make those for Summit, they put the Summit logo in them, all that stuff, but they are assembled and built by Brodix with the same parts that they've used for the Brodix IK heads and they're pretty much the same price. So I've done my research and I know that's true, so I'm confident that they're a quality piece. Now the camshaft is also a Summit brand camshaft, probably made by Elgin or someone like that. And the camshaft is a 234 at 50 duration, 488 lift, and that's on the intake and exhaust. Like I said in my race week video while I was still in Great Bend in the hotel parking lot after the first day, my 114 degree lobe separation probably had a lot to do with my converter not stalling up. Um, I picked that cam because I wanted plenty of vacuum for the power brakes because I knew my wife would be driving some. And with this cam, it's got a 106 lobe separation. Uh, you run out of vacuum real quick if you pump the brake pedal three or four times. I didn't want that to happen in this car, so I picked something with a wider lobe separation. Still a healthy duration on the, uh, on, the, on the intake and exhaust on the cam and 488 lift. Now, probably a bad cam choice. And you know what, it, we, we did fine. It, it wasn't as fast as I thought it would be. A lot of that's because of the stumble. Some of that's because of the converter being tight, but then maybe the converter's tight because it's not making enough torque because of the lean stumble that I've got at a low RPM. I'll get that figured out and we'll see what it'll run. Now, we had a great time. The car finished the whole week, which was my whole priority. My, my first priority was getting through the entire week, making it back to the track we started at, and it did that. So I'm awful proud of my car, even though it's slower than I wanted it to be. So now what I'm gonna do is this. Um, I'm gonna leave it like it is. Uh, I'm gonna drive it around some here and then re reload the uh, the learn table onto the base tune to get the tune more accustomed to Georgia weather instead of Kansas weather. And then I'm gonna take it to the track again this Friday night if it don't rain like it did last Friday night. And we're gonna run it in the same combination pretty much. Uh, hopefully get most of that lean stumble out, but if we don't, it's fine. And I'll know the difference between Georgia and Kansas and get an idea what it would run here with all the same problems other than altitude. And then I'm gonna take it to my buddy's shop, let him tune it on his chassis dyno, get some horsepower numbers, and then we're gonna run it again and see how much faster a real good tune from a professional tuner changes the numbers. Hopefully it'll be a bunch, but who knows? Now, I've got more coming on this car. I'm working on Frank and Nova because I'm going to race week 2.0, which is in September, and that car is going this time. This will be my backup, so if I tear this one up, um, you know, I've got a backup. Now, I've also got a backup engine for this, so really I don't suspect expect to have too much problems with Frankenova. I've also got the No Name Nationals coming up at the end of September, uh, September 30th and October 1st. That's going to be a lot of fun and I'm racing Jeff at Two Hats Garage with his 68 Thunderbird. You need to go check out his channel because Two Hats Garage, he's building all, he's putting out a ton of videos working on that 68 Thunderbird. He's got a 521 big block Ford and it's going to be a riot. Going to have a good time and hopefully I got a little something for him but you know we won't know until we get there. You guys should come check it out. Now, Budget Nova, I'm fixing to jump back on that real hard. I need to get it sold real soon. So I'm going to be hard on it for the next week or two. Also playing with Frank and Nova, getting the last few things done to it and doing some testing to it. But this Budget Nova is going to be sold as soon as I get it done and do a little short road trip in it. So if anyone's interested, hit me up. It's going to be cheaper than a lot of you might think, but it's going to be, it's going to be you know, worth worth what I sell it for. You know, it's gonna be mostly mechanically, almost brand new, electrically and mechanically. Body wise, we'll see where it ends up when I'm done with it, how much time I have left. But we're, we're coming right along with it, so I'm excited about it. 
Guys, I appreciate it. I appreciate all my subscribers. It was wonderful meeting some of you at the, at the Rocky Mountain Race Week. And uh, I look forward to meeting more of you on future trips and, and other things like that. And I appreciate all you guys watching, sharing, commenting, and liking my videos. And we'll see you next time.